Hey, hey, this is Kylian and you are on Eat The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to give you six tricks to make the UI UX of your decentralized application more user-friendly. A lot of blockchain developers put a lot of efforts on their smart contract, but disregard the front end of their decentralized application. And that's really big mistake because end users are not going to use your dApp if the front end is not really intuitive and user-friendly. So if you want to have users to use your dApp, you need to learn how to make a good intuitive front end. And we're going to learn this in this video with six tricks. Trick number one, run your decentralized application in read-only mode for users who don't have any wallet. So decentralized application rely on user to have a wallet already installed, but there are many newcomers to the blockchain who want to try out decentralized application and they don't have yet a wallet. So they're going to go to the website of your DAB, they're going to load, load the front end. And what a lot of DAB do is that if they don't detect any injected wallet, they just display a message to the user saying, hey, I'm sorry, you can't use this DAB, you need to install a wallet first. And it kind of remind me to the, the 10 years, 15 years ago, some website used to do this when users disable JavaScript. And that was just so user unfriendly because when a new user see this, at this point, he hasn't seen the value of your decentralized application yet. And however, you ask this user to make some effort to install a wallet. So most likely that user won't bother and will just leave and never come back. So instead, what you can do is have a read-only mode for your decentralized application where users will just be able to read data from the smart contract but won't be able to send any transaction. And the way you can do this is to have a fallback Web3 provider that connect to Infura and it doesn't go through any wallet. So if a user tries to click on a button to send a transaction, you will show the user a pop-up that says, hey, you're trying to send a transaction, but for this, you need to install a wallet first. So please go install this wallet and click on the button again. And at this stage, the user will have a better appreciation of the value of your DAP and will be more likely to actually install the wallet. Trick number two, support multiple wallet. Most decentralized applications pretty much only work with MetaMask and if we use other wallet, they break. So this is not as serious as it looks like because most users actually do use MetaMask, but in some cases, it's not true. For example, a lot of users on mobile don't use MetaMask, but they use other wallet like Trust Wallet or the wallet of Coinbase, for example. So if you use a feature that is specific to MetaMask, like the enable method that shows a pop-up to allow the, the DAP to be used by, by MetaMask. If you use one of these features spe uh, specific to MetaMask, then it's gonna break if users have other wallet. So if you want to fix this, yeah, then you need to do more work. When you uh, start up your decentralized application, you need to de detect which wallet is used by users. And then depending on this, the behavior of your DAP will be different. This being said, if you just stick to the basic functionality of Web3, which is to read data to a, from a smart contract and send transaction, these two functionality are really consistent on all wallets. So for this, you don't need to worry. Trick number three, don't trigger the DAP approval pop-ups too early. So for MetaMask, for new version of MetaMask, there is a feature that appeared recently, I think in 2018, where basically before you are able to use the wallet of a user, you need to ask this user to allow your DAP to use MetaMask. So most decentralized applications just trigger this pop-up as soon as they have finished loading. And that's really an interruption for users. So instead of doing, of doing this, what you can do is wait for the user to send a transaction. And before this user send a transaction, then you show him the pop-up that say, hey, you need to allow this DAP to use MetaMask. The next trick is to describe clearly the effects of transactions. So currently, when you send a transaction and users see the confirmation pop-up on their wallet, there is no clear description of what the transaction is going to do. So for users, sometimes it can be really confusing. They don't really know 
which pop-up correspond to which action. So at some point, Wallace will get better with this. And in particular, uh, MetaMask said that they are working on something to improve this, uh, this confirmation message. But in, for the time being, there is no solution. There is no solution with what. So instead, you should take care of it yourself in your DApp. So before user click on a button to send a transaction, you need to explain them clearly what this transaction is going to do, and you need to uh, give them the different value of the different parameters that you're going to send to to the transaction, so that everything is really clear when they click on this confirmation pop up. They really know what's happening. The next trick is to show some feedback after user send transaction to the blockchain. So when you send a transaction to the blockchain, this is not immediate, but you need to wait a couple of minutes before your transaction is mined and, uh, and has enough confirmation, which means enough block have been mined on top of the block of your transaction. And during all this time, you need to show some feedback to the user because if you don't tell anything to the user, users will assume that something is wrong and they might even try to send another transaction and they will waste some gas and be frustrated and it's going to be really bad. So you don't want this to happen. So basically, after a transaction, after a user send a transaction to the network, first, we need to show the user that the transaction has been sent and is being processed by the network. And also you need to lessen for transaction confirmation. So every time a block is mined on top of the transaction, you need to tell the user. So you, you're going to update maybe a pop-up or some place in your UI where you say, Hey, now you have one, one confirmation, two confirmations, three, three confirmations that the, the user know what's, what's going on. And the next trick is to keep the UI up to date with your smart contract. So the data of your smart contract can change anytime and not just because of the current user, but it can be another user somewhere else who change the data of the smart contract. And so it's very important to keep the UI up to date with this. So one way to solve this problem is to use events. So basically you can listen in real time from the front end, you can listen to this event that happened in the smart contract. So in your smart contract, whenever something important changing changes then you emit these events and the information is going to be pushed to the front end and then you can update the ui and so the ui always keep up to date with the smart contract so how can you implement all the advice i gave you well first you need to have a good command of web3 the javascript library to interact with your ethereum smart contract and actually i've done a whole series on web3 on my channel you can look it up if you're not clear on how web3 work and another thing you can do is use drizzle so drizzle is a front-end javascript framework to help you to keep the ui of your decentralized application up to date with the data of your smart contract so with Drizzle, uh, basically what happened is you configure it. You say, hey, I want you to listen to what happened in this smart contract. And I want you to listen to, uh, to this function with this parameter. And Drizzle will maintain a local store on the front end with all the data uh, in sync with the smart contract. And from there, it's really easy to keep everything uh, in sync. I have two videos about Drizzle, one that I've done recently on how to use the latest feature of Drizzle and, and integrate it with React. And I have another video, which is slightly outdated, but is uh, much more comprehensive. By the way, if you are learning Web3, make sure to grab a free copy of my Web3 cheat sheet where I have summarized all the most important information about Web3 that you need to know as a blockchain developer. This is totally free. Just follow the link in the description. So what kind of challenge have you faced when building the UI UX of your decentralized application? Let me know in the comments down below. So that's it for these tricks to make the UI UX of your DAP more user friendly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for another video about blockchain and Ethereum. Bye bye.